Today I'm going to be giving you the no bullshit guide to the Windows artifact named Prefetch. Everything you need to know about Prefetch when PC checking somebody will be inside of this video. So to give you a quick rundown what Prefetch is, Prefetch is a file inside of every Windows computer unless it's tampered and removed which will show you all of the recently executed binary files or portable executable files as shown here. Today I'm going to show you what you need to look for when looking through this big folder of lots and lots of data, decoding it, showing you what you need and you will not need another prefetch video after this when using it to PC check somebody in Fortnite, 5M, Minecraft, Gary's Mod, Free Fire, any community in PC checking, this video is for you. So to start off with, the great thing about prefetch is we can find files that have been ran with a modified extension. So for example, this test executable here, I can rename it to a .png file. So this is an image file now. However, obviously this won't open as an image as it is an actual executable. We can execute this using command prompt. So if I click tab, then if I just click enter, this is now gonna launch the executable. And then now if we head over to the prefetch folder, you can see here right at the top, test.png has been launched. Obviously this is great. We can see the file name. We have an eight byte hash afterwards, but if you're just trying to keep it simple, this is all the information we have at base front. And this is where we start to use something called a prefetch parser. The one we're going to go into is a one named win prefetch view. This is going to be the first link in the description. Now, once win prefetch is open, it will look a little bit like this. What you want to do is you want to make sure you filter it by the last runtime most recently. And now we can see the whole directory of where this executable was. Here, you'll be able to go ahead and find the executable and prove that it was a cheat. Now in prefetch, all of the files are executable files and executable files by default have the .exe extension. So if anything here doesn't have .exe, then you're probably looking at something malicious. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is looking at the prefetch files all together. So it's all well and good if we find a file that has a different extension on the end of it, indicating it could be malicious, but there's no way you're going to manually check all of the executable files to see if they're malicious or not. So this is where my screen share tool detect.ac comes into play. So this is an automated scanner that will automatically scan the whole user's computer, not only just the prefetch, but everything that could possibly be indicating that a user could be cheating is inside of my tool. It's just £10 a month. You guys should definitely check it out in the first link in the description and start catching cheaters today. And we also have a free tool, which is what I'm going to go into now, the prefetch parser made by one of our developers, eSpoken, that's going to show you guys the best way to look at all of the prefetch files all together. Let's get into it. We're going to go ahead and go to detect.ac slash tools. We're then going to go ahead and go to the prefetch parser, click the download button, and then we're going to go ahead and download it and launch it. Once it's been launched, we're going to go ahead and filter it by the last last execution date. And now, as you can see here, it's found the test PNG, but here's the great thing about this tool. It has Yara rules and signature checks on all of the files in here and whether it's present or not. So we can then use hotkeys here or filters, sorry. We can do only an instance, so only stuff since my PC's restarted. We can also show only flagged files, so this will find a couple cheats, or in this case, it's found some of my screen share tools executables, or we can take a look at just unsigned files in general, and this will find ones also not on the system, which you can recover, and then you can do two at once. So I can find files that are on my computer that have been ran in instance that cannot be found, as you can see here, the one before I renamed to .png have been launched, and now it's unfound on the system. Now, this is really great at looking through prefetch, and I definitely recommend this. Also has the execution history so it does what when prefetch view does right here with the last runtime it just pops at the bottom a little bit about the prefetch file info and then related files which we'll get into later. So now we've taken a look at renamed extensions we've taken a look at looking at the prefetch files as a whole. Now we're going to go ahead and go into some more in-depth bypasses using something called reg server 32 and run dll. 32. Now, those two Windows processes are used to bypass in screen shares. So, the first one we're going to take a look at is Reg Server or Reg Service 32. This allows you to launch DLLs untraced except from inside of Prefetch using the affiliated files. I'm just going to show you how it works. So, if we get the command here for it to launch a DLL and I just click enter, obviously, this is not a com DLL. I won't go into that now, but it will not launch this one, but it will launch other ones. This is just an example. This is one of my very, very old auto clickers. 
This will launch it. And then when you decide to self-destruct or close it in a way, then it's gone. There's barely any traces anywhere on the system. So this is where we're going to use prefetch to detect this one alongside the run DLL command, which does a very similar thing. If we put together the run DLL command and click enter, it's also going to launch it. I do not remember the entry point for this DLL. So I've just put a dot. But if you put the real entry point, then it will actually launch the DLL. And then when you self-destruct and close it, then there's barely any traces anywhere. So I'm going to tell you guys how you're going to find it. So to start off with, you're going to win prefetch feed. You're going to want to refresh. To start off with, Windows by default doesn't use reg server 32 or reg service 32.exe in any default program. So when you see it here, it's very likely that it's malicious. Of course, other programs can still use it, but it's going to click something in your brain that you should think looking into it. So what you're going to do if you see it here, you go to the affiliated files and it's going to be in one of these DLLs down here. Now, there's a lot of DLLs. So to cancel out a couple of them, you want to index it from bottom to top and then you want to find the name of the process in the indexes. Anything above that, they are imports or things that help with the launch of the service. They're not going to be anything malicious at all. So anything above that, you can completely disregard. Now, we want to look at everything beneath this. So everything moving downwards, we're going to want to take a look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to signature check these DLLs. We can take a screenshot as it doesn't allow you to copy paste. Take a screenshot. Take this, go to an image to text converter, which is going to be the second link in the description, paste it in, click convert. Then once it's converted, we're going to have all of the file paths here in which we can copy. We're then going to get a notepad open, pop them in here, save it in its own folder and call it paths.txt. And then just to save time for now, I'm not going to do all of them, but you do every single one inside of here. Fill up the notepad, click save and then close it. After this, what we're going to want to do is go to this paths parser made by you spoken, which runs Yara rules and signature checks on all of the paths that we provide to it inside of the root folder inside of a named file called paths.txt. So this is perfect for us to use. Going to go ahead and click download, put it inside the same folder in which we put the paths.txt into, then click save. Then we're going to navigate to the folder directory, launch it, more info run anyway, and then we're going to let it run on the files. And as you can see here, we have a couple files here that are flagged that are not portable executable files. So that's absolutely fine. Fine. We have file deleted ones, so we may want to double check the location of this or recover it. And then here we have our DLL, which was flagged as not signed and with malicious Yara rules. So we have now detected that this DLL was in fact the cheat using prefetch. And the exact same thing is what you would do with run DLL 32. So in this case, run DLL 32, you signature check all of the paths using the copy paste, put it inside of the paths pass and you should be able to see it. And as you can see here, the GCAPI 32.dll, the malicious one, is also inside the affiliated files for run DLL 32. And that is how you find bypasses using reg server or reg service 32 and run DLL 32. And of course, there are going to be bypasses for this. So one of them is setting the prefetch file attribute to be read only. So what we're going to do to check that is we're going to go run DLL 32.exe. And then we're just going to check every single one in here, show more properties, properties, and then make sure that the attribute read only is not selected. If it is selected like this and you go into the file and see it there, then you can confidently ban the user as this should not be enabled by default. Obviously, detect.ac, my screen share tool completely automates this. However, there is another detection that there is as they could easily set the attribute to read only and then just unselect it, click apply, click OK. And then when we go through and check, then the read only attribute won't be selected and they would have successfully by Bypass. So this is where we're going to go ahead and use journal trace. Journal trace is a tool that allows us to pass the USN journal, which is going to show us a basic info change on the prefetch file if this attribute is changed. So we go drive select, select the C drive or wherever the prefetch file is, then select scan. Then we're going to go to layout and click directory grid. Then we're just going to put in here run dll 32exe click search, and then we're going to be able to see the prefetch files having basic info changes. As you can see down here, we just filter it by most recent date then it's going to show us them at the top. So this is going to be an indication that the prefetch file has been modified, the attributes have been modified, then you can confidently ban this person off of this. And we also have this inside of our detection software at detect.ac. So you don't even need to worry about doing this manually. You scan them with a quick two minute scan and then the results will show that they are cheating by finding this string inside of USN journal. Then a last little thing, I just launched this on an external drive and then deleted the external drive using disk partition software. If the process path doesn't fully pass and it's a backward slash volume starting path, then you know that this was ran on a different drive that's currently 
currently not on the computer anymore. Anything like this, I would also ban for just because there's no way to recover it as well if the external drive has been disconnected especially and if the disk partition has been removed or the drive has been reformatted. But that's everything you need to know about Prefetch. Check out my screen share tool which automates 90% of what I've said in this video. It's only $9.99 per month. £50 yearly. We currently beat all prices on the screen share tool market. Also join the Discord. That'll be somewhere in the description too. And thank you very much.